people at your girl Adiola. So guess what? The Nigerian government organized their own Bring Back a Girls protest this week. Did you guys see the pictures? You know, they came in the Shwapi government-owned buses, market women, unemployed young men, all of them paid to march to the federal secretariat in Abuja. They were all wearing t-shirts that said bring back our girls. The only difference is they said that their protest is to Boko Haram, not to the government. First of all, there must be a mistake somewhere. If you're protesting against Boko Haram, why not go to Sambisa Forest where Boko Haram lives? Eh? Second of all, suddenly NTA had time to cover this protest. Eh? This is our national television. <laughs> This is a serious matter. You don't know when to joke and when, when not to joke. Ah, uh -uh, what is your problem now? As I was saying, legitimate protesters have been going to the Unity Fountain in Abuja daily for the past about 30 days and NTA never once covered their protest. That is the group led by Dr. Obi Ezek, who is silly by the way. But now, suddenly NTA showed up. Eh? <laughs> that is how you know it's a government-sponsored protest. And then, to my greatest disappointment, this new group harassed the legitimate protesters. I'm like, what? They were breaking their chairs, hitting them with empty bottles. They stole cell phones, they stole handbags of the real protesters. They also attacked the local and international media correspondents that were covering the real protest, confiscating and breaking their cameras. And the whole time, the whole time, Nigerian policemen were there doing nothing, absolutely nothing. Actually, that is not completely right. They arrested two of the troublemakers and then within 10 minutes, <laughs> they released them right there. Which makes me wonder if this administration is truly trying to find these girls. And by the way, this week, I learned that four more girls escaped on their Oh, no, no help from the military. No, no, no. And while these girls are trying to break free, Nigerian officials are still playing the blame game. I mean, listen to our information minister, Lebanon Maku. If you go to the Bring Back the Girl campaign, 90% of those organizing it belong to a political party. Has the media ever analyzed it? 90% of those organizing it belong to a particular political party. Can you imagine that? That means that 90% of all of you that have been protesting all over the world, all of you belong to a political party. And by that, it means the opposition party, APC. 90% of you in Canada, in the US, in London, in Sweden, in Nigeria, including Michelle Obama <laughs> and Malala. Yeah, another APC there, yeah, right there. There goes another APC. Yes, APC, APC, APC. Do you see what I'm saying? 90% of you are APC. The Chibok girls remain our number one priority. We will never sleep, we will not rest until God brings them out. I beg, I beg, does he look like someone that has not been sleeping to you? Eh? And then he ended it by saying that eh, until God brings them back. I said Nigerians. It is God that will go into that bush eh, where we have not done our own part. Eh? Meanwhile, one soldier spoke with journalists that hmm, they are ill-equipped compared to Boko Haram. And he said that they are underpaid. Not only that, he said that they are normally given about 69 bullets to share among themselves with AK-47. Meanwhile, Boko Haram guys are using machine guns. They have ammo tanks. He said that a lot of the soldiers are frustrated. And then our chief of defense staff announced to the whole world that they now know where the girls are. I said, okay, and so that's it? Really? You know where the girls are? That is not the only thing that we want to hear. I don't think that they should even announce to the world that they know where the girls are until they've rescued them. Don't you think so? Because if I were Boko Haram, I'll just move them to another place. Now listen to his explanation about why they've not gone after these girls. We are up against something that is more than Boko Haram. So it's no longer Boko Haram. It is Al-Qaeda we are fighting. Yeah. Hey, hey, that is Kado. Now we are fighting Al Qaeda. Eh? It is no longer Boko Haram. And then he said that they are formidable, but we will confront them. I said, Mr. Man, Mr. Man, of course you will confront them. Nobody is arguing about that. You know, but the question is, eh, when? When now? How long will it be? You know, last week I told you about how two parents of the girls have already died. Whatever they were hoping to do to these girls, by now they would have done everything. They would have messed them up by now. Don't you think so? It has taken way too long. Oh, I saw this video that made me realize that right now, Nigeria has become the laughing stock in many countries. On the case of Boko Haram, for me when I'm watching on television and I find our leaders wait until they are invited to go to Europe <laughs> to sit there and, 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 and just... You know, it's like they are made to sit down and address their problems. We are happy to sit there in Paris with the President of France 
and address and just talk about addressing problems. And I hate to say that this man is right, but he is. He is right. Yes, he has his own issues. I agree. But whether you like it or not, that is how people are now looking at Nigeria. He said that it's like we like to appear as if we are addressing problems, but we really don't. And in case you're wondering what he's talking about, this is Nigerian president in Paris when he was supposed to visit the girls in Chibok. My question is for Mr. Goodluck, uh, Jonathan. What kind of support have you foreseen for the uh, family of these young girls and why didn't you go and visit the families as soon as you heard that uh, these young girls had been abducted? Uh, uh, thank you. Maybe we, the issue of uh, visit the families. Uh, the, these girls that are from a particular school, but there are lots of misconceptions. These girls have been removed from the school. So visiting the school per se, does not solve the problem. The commitment of the president and the Nigerian government is to find where these girls are. They are not from one family. They are scattered from a particular Chibok area, which is more than, I think, one full local made up of so many communities. So there is no one family that you go and uh, visit. If the president goes to Chibok today, it does not solve any problem. Maybe psychological problem or for uh, media relevance. But the commitment of the federal government is to rebuild that school with good walls to protect it and provide facilities since it's predominantly a school that takes care of girls' education. <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> Did he answer the question? He still didn't visit the families, by the way, till now. I mean, Shebi, it's only a matter of telling all the parents to gather somewhere. No one is expecting Mr. President to be going from house to house. But you know, when President Goodluck Jonathan visited South Africa recently, they booed him. The world is now laughing at us. They basically told him, go and bring back the girls. And then his wife will come out and say, stop abusing my husband. Stop abusing my husband. Why won't people abuse your husband, madam? He reinforced the security guard at the presidential villa very recently because of protesters. Instead of sending those soldiers to rescue the girls. Why won't people talk? Lawmakers recently approved Governor Akpabio getting 100 million naira as medical retirement allowance and Mr. President is not saying anything about that. Why won't people abuse your husband? Seriously? And um, lastly, and I'll keep saying this, that I am really disappointed in the Christian body in Nigeria as well. I mean, more than 200 girls have been kidnapped for more than 40 days and churches are not marching in support of these girls. Most of the girls are Christians, by the way. But you know, that doesn't even matter. Pastors and prophets are not rallying their members. I'm like, what? All that the Christian Association of Nigeria has done, can, is to ask people to fast for three days. And I'm like, even Abraham, the father of faith, when his nephew Lot was taken captive, remember that Abraham went after them just with the people in his household. He faced a huge army and he fought until he rescued his nephew. He didn't just stay at home praying. Shouldn't that challenge us to do more? And I know that if the daughter of any big man of God were to be among those girls that were kidnapped, all their church members by now would have been protesting. But you know, wait and be my own. I don't know anything anyway. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Moving on to Ghana. Hey! I have a confession. <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. I fear Ghanaians. So, ah! I fear Ghanaians. Hey, you guys know how much Ghanaians like to say that Nigerians are scammers. Nigerians are 419. Nigerians are this, they that. Shoo! This week, I had about a Ghanaian scammer that surpassed all the Nigerian scammers put together. Hey, Charlie! This is 27-year-old Froster. I mean, uh, Foster. Yes, uh, <laughs> Foster Atta Mensa. Actually, I think you can say Froster because he's he's a fraud. But you know what I don't understand is how this guy was able to convince so many people in Ghana that he is a computational mathematician, an applied scientist, an engineer, a physicist, a computer scientist, a research scientist for NASA, as well as a Nobel Prize winner, among other titles. I'm like, what? How can somebody be all these things at the same time? And and he's only 27. I'm not saying that uh, <laughs> anything can happen. Some people got their PhD the day they were born. But all these titles for one person and you did not bother to research? And guess what? Ghanaian started publishing his story left and right. Hey, everywhere you go, there is this young Ghanaian who has won the Nobel Prize. Even the Ghanaian president congratulated him in his speech. In fact, his church came out. They sent out a press release that behold, people of Ghana, 
This guy, <laughs> this genius, he's our church member. <laughs> he even made it to a national TV for an exclusive interview. Hey, Ashe Che! Ashe, Charlie is a liar. Hey, a pathological liar for that matter. None of it was true. I said, Che! Che! There is God, bro! You know, it's one thing to lie. <laughs> it's another thing to defend the lie. I mean, how did he have the nerves to go on national TV and keep lying upon lies? You also have won a Nobel Award. Yeah. A Nobel at your age? Yeah. Tell me, I. How did you do it? What's your story? I always wanted to develop machines, especially robotics and mechatronics. Android, either Android or humanoid machine, robotics or automated resin. So I have a good friend who was, uh, was quite good. He's uh, American. He's an American. So he helped me to build it a, a robot hand that could be able to, that, that could help you know, stroke patients mm. to serve themselves coffee. Hey, hey, Charlie, Charlie, come, come. Next time, don't embarrass me. No, 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 this is an embarrassment. Uh -uh. If you are going to lie that you are a computational mathematician, an applied scientist, an engineer, a physicist, and so on and so forth, at least sound convincing and work on your presentation. Uh -uh. The way you were talking, ah, uh -uh, that was an embarrassment. No, 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 I don't like that. And, and um, can you guys believe? how he was lying with a straight face. And, and you're also chairman of AXA. AXA, yeah. Tell, tell me about AXA. AXA is a ben bank brain. The brain bank, excuse me to say that. Mm. The brain bank of African engineers, computer scientists, technologists, professors, doctors who are teaching, who are lecturing computer science, you know. But it's not well known in Ghana. And a young man like you in Ghanaian parlance, we call it a small boy like you. <laughs> what are you doing as their chairman? How did you become their chairman? You know, after all this Everest Award, and I have to be elected. You know, we go through elections. So you have to, you have to see your performance, how do you do, especially your academic cult backgrounds. And mm. if they see that you're a high profile, especially you are good, you can handle access. Whoa, 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 whoa! This guy has a problem. No, seriously, I think that I need to pray for him. No remorse whatsoever. It's like he actually believes the stuff that he made up. That is dangerous. Guess what? Once the guy got busted, his church published a disclaimer. <laughs> This is what they said. The Church of Pentecost hereby disassociates itself from the claim by Foster Atta Mensa as being a Nobel Prize in Physics awardee and all other such claims by him. And um, also the church is helping him to see a clinical psychologist. <laughs> this is sad, eh? I can't believe that even the church would disown him. I mean, isn't that when he needs the church the most? When he messed up? Hey, yeah, Charlie, why get yourself tangled in such a mess? As he is now, there's nothing else that he can say that people would believe him, even if he changes. But um, I don't completely blame the guy. I mean, how did the media not pay attention to the pictures that he gave them? These pictures were obviously photoshopped. Now, take a good look, my people. Can't you can't you see? I mean, can't you guys see? Look at this one. He said that he's in space. No, no, no. Can you tell Ghanaian media? What is the rush in publishing a story before verifying? Honestly, this is an embarrassment for the Ghanaian media. I'm not saying that all the Ghanaian media don't verify, but those of them that run the story, those, those of them that interviewed him. And um, since when does the UN give Nobel Prize award? by the way because he claimed that it was the UN that gave him the award I thought everybody knows that it's a committee set up in Norway and Sweden but for physics it's in Norway that they get the, the Nobel Prize I mean you can blame the poor guy I think that he recently learned how to use Photoshop and he just was trying to have some fun with it I, I'm not uh, in any way promoting scamo I beg I'm just appealing to all the young people out there myself included please don't get in the habit of lying you may land yourself in a huge mess than you ever thought possible. But you know, I don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real.
Moving on to Malawi. Too much drama. How about to all the women out there that are watching my show? Those of you who have political aspirations. If you're thinking of going into politics or you are already in politics, especially if you want to become a first lady like me, don't embarrass me. No, no, no. Don't go and embarrass me, Jo. Uh -uh. How can I come on this show telling people that women are great, that women are exceptional, that women have compassion, you know, that we are transparent, that we are not dictators? And then some of you women out there, you make it look as if I'm lying. Hey, you make it look as if I'm a liar. Eh? <laughs> My friend, what is this? What is the meaning of this? Oh boy, the day that these women will come after you, please don't call my number. Don't think they don't know where you live. Have I mentioned anybody's name? Eh? Have I mentioned any names? The day they will come after you, you are on your own. Hmm. Anyway, uh, as I was saying, my people, this past week, hmm, I was so disappointed. I was so disappointed that the first female president of Malawi, the first female president in Southern Africa, tried to nullify an election in which she faced defeat. I said, Abba, Abba, hey, why would you try to nullify an election? She didn't even suggest a recount. Eh? She said it's because the election was being rigged which is true, the Malawi Electoral Commission confirmed that the election was being rigged. But let's say that Madame was the one winning that election, you know? Do you think that she will still try to cancel that election, even if it's been rigged? Um, I don't think so. She made it look as if it's not about her. So she said, oh, by the way, I'm no longer contesting. <laughs> uh, just re redo everything. I'm so glad that the Electoral Commission spoke up immediately, reminding Madame that no, 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 that she has no power, no right to do that. And I'm so glad that she retracted her words. She said it was a slip of tongue. I was like, no, 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 that was not a slip of tongue. I mean, that's a huge matter. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I know what's going on. Call it all. Which candidate was winning when Madame canceled that election? Oh, 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 Peter Mutharika. Isn't that uh, the brother of the former president? Eh? The one that died before Joyce Banda was sworn in. Eh? I see. That explains why, mm, you know, it's possible that she didn't want to lose to this guy because he tried to prevent her from taking over two years ago when the former president died. So she would rather lose the election to another candidate. But, you know, that is just a guess. I mean, I'm not from Malawi. I may be completely wrong about why she wanted to cancel that election. Call it You've been flashing this private jet picture over and over, eh? All right, I will speak about the private jet. Uh, my people, you guys remember when we heard that this woman was selling the presidential jet last year, eh? For $15 million in order to feed the poor people and grow crops in order to fight malnutrition in Malawi. Eh? Remember that time? Mm. Anyway, several months after that, people started asking, hey, Madam, where is the food you brought for us now with $15 million? And that it has to be a lot of food, $15 million. Eh? Where are the crops for $15 million? Eh? Malawi is still one of the poorest countries, by the way. They said, hey, Madam, if you didn't buy food, what did you use the $15 million to do? Hey! That was when a local newspaper did some investigations and found out that the presidency never sold the jet. Hey! The jet was never sold. Can you imagine? She gave the jet to a company called the Bonox Enterprise Limited. And that company gave $15 million to a company called Paramount Group of Companies because her government was owing the Paramount Group of Companies a lot of money for firearms. Are you confused? Yeah, just rewind. <laughs> All I'm saying is that there was never a deposit of money into the account of the Malawian government. They use it as leverage for firearms that the government had bought. Huh? Not only that, investigations revealed that Madame herself rented this same private jet after telling the world that she sold it. And you know, my greatest disappointment came from her not coming straight forward about it lying about it, not knowing that her finance minister would come out and say the truth. And um, don't forget that Malawi is already being investigated for the cash gate saga. That is when they discovered that a lot of top officials in Malawi have been stealing money, big, big money. In fact, one of them, they found $250,000 cash, cash in his trunk. Most of the foreign donors 
withdrew their donation to um, Malawi. They just don't trust the government anymore. Now, having said all that, I'd like to give kudos to her for the fact that she, in the past two years that she's been in office, this woman initiated several grassroots projects about policy change for women and children in Malawi. She also has all these foundations for better education for young women leaders, for business women, and so on and so forth. And she provided HIV AIDS treatment for more than half a million people, putting them on lifelong medication. And she put HIV positive pregnant women on treatment as well. Overall, AIDS related deaths have declined significantly in Malawi and the prevalence has also gone down 10.6%. So she did some things during her time in office, but don't forget my ladies, eh? like I said at the beginning, whatever you do, don't embarrass me. So that one day when I'm first lady, we can hang out. Eh? Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Hold on. I smell something fishy. I feel like somebody out there is up to something, something that is not good. Hold on. You see, this is what I've been smelling. Hey, Jermaine, even though I'm not in Gambia, I can always smell it when this man starts another dubious campaign. Eh? Eh, so I heard that uh, members of his parliament, his own party members, so now want to crown Mr. President as king. Eh? It's not enough that he's been president for the past 20 years. Now they want to make him king. And then after that, they will make him God. Oh, where do you think this is going? Listen to what they said. It is in the best interest of Gambians to introduce a monarchy <laughs> and crown President Jermaine as a king. See me see trouble. Eh, yawa. These African leaders, they never cease to amaze me. Eh? And then they said, um, this is also in the interest of opposition political parties. It will give them the opportunity to be part of government through a prime ministerial setup. Really? No, no, no. This is a setup. You think Gambians don't know where this is going? And then they used Morocco as an example of what they are trying to do. I mean, we all know that his wife is from Morocco, which makes me wonder if it's the wife that put them to this or Jamin himself because um this is how Jamin responded well well my people my people who am I to ask you to crown me king eh sovereignty lies in the hands of the people of Gambia and it is whatever the people of Gambia want that will happen <laughs> doesn't that smell fishy to you <laughs> Since when does sovereignty lie in the hands of the people of Gambia? Even common election campaigns, he tells them to vote for him is their sacred duty. I mean, I'm sure that you all saw the posters. This one says that a vote for him in 2011 is a sacred duty for all Gambians or you die. Wait, wait, wait a minute. No, 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 no. He said that he's not responsible for this poster, this particular one that added or you die. <laughs> he said that it's his supporters that put it up. Yeah, yeah. This one, you can barely read it, but it says we will not only vote for him in 2011. We are ready to die for him. I said, Jay, Jay, Gambians, there is God. <laughs> So this is a do or die election and, and then the same man is saying that sovereignty lies in the hands of the people of Gambia. That is what I call Fabu story story. Wasn't it last year that this same Jermaine changed working days in Gambia from five days to four days? He didn't even consult the people. He just announced that now you will start working only from Monday to Thursday saying that Fridays are for prayers. You know the people of Gambia were like uh, wait a minute, Gambia is not an Islamic state, yet they couldn't do anything. Now in Gambia, they only have four working days. Not only that, this is the same president that ordered the killing of innocent students. Remember, 14 of them in broad daylight, as well as several journalists and anyone who speaks up against his administration. This week, you know, I saw this, this picture of uh, the children of one of those killed by Jermaine. The girls are asking what happened to their father. Notice that they directed their question to Mr. President. It's like you just, you're almost to tears when you realize the pain that this man has caused so many families. And yet he acts as if people don't know his true color. Listen to one of the MPs that are trying to crown him a king. If the Gambian people want him to be a king, he will be, and no one can stop that because Gambia is a democratic state. 
I said, yay! Demo, a demo what? It is only on paper that Gambia is a democratic country. Nobody tells Jermaine what to do. By the way, we all know that election is coming up in 2016. This is obviously another scheme to make sure that either the election doesn't hold in 2016 or that it's a sham. But while Gambians are trying to process the news of MPs begging to crown Jermaine, a lot of money went down this week that Jermaine turned 49. They spent a lot of money, millions, with very artists performing including Sizzla you know the Jamaican artist I was like seriously dude my Rastafarian brother why are you performing for this dictator now eh I'm really disappointed jobless anyway um all I'm saying though is that Jermaine doesn't look like he's ready to leave out even after 20 years 20 years and now he's trying to make his seat a permanent one by becoming a monarch unfortunately though Gambians are tired of you Mr. Jermaine and if really sovereignty lies with the people of the Gambia then do what the people want Mr. Jermaine step down huh guess what I'm just keeping it real I'm excited to tell you guys about a project that I've been working on for some months now yeah it's my first single! Oh, yes, yes! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! With this song, I'm campaigning for peace in Nigeria, especially as we face terrorism by Boko Haram, as well as ethnic, land, and religious unrest. I've been doing this show now for about two years, but I'm hoping that with this song, that I can take the campaign for peace, the campaign for the government to care, for their people. I'm hoping I can take that campaign even further with this song. So I'm counting on you guys to please, please, please be a part of this project by donating on my page on kickstarter.com. That's where a lot of people raise funds, by the way, if you're an artist or something and you're trying to raise funds, please go to kickstarter.com. So the money will go towards the recording, the production, and if I'm able to raise like double the target or something, I will definitely make a music video. The song is written in Yoruba and English with spoken words in Hausa and Igbo and also there is no limits to the amount that I can raise. The only trouble is that if I don't meet my target on kickstarter.com they will not give me any money. So it's either everything or nothing on kickstarter.com. Any donations above $20 is getting a free download of the song on iTunes and please visit the rewards page to see other rewards including t-shirts and CDs and a dinner with Adeola and so on and so forth. And a big shout out to my very first donor. I don't even know who this person is. His name is Larry Ola the joke i really appreciate it make sure that you like my facebook fan page that's where i'll be writing the updates you know the work in progress if you have any questions uh put it on my facebook page or my twitter page so without further ado here is a sneak peek of the song peace in my land Alright y'all, it's been real and I'm keeping it real right up in here. Until next week, I'm gonna see y'all later. Peace out.